would probably talk about um, the advantage of not having your legals during a wedding ceremony. I am actually going to go and get a drink. Now, some people will... There's look Well, I don't want to give you the negative. I want to give you the positive. But what should we go for? Let's go for gin and tonic. <laughs> um, separating the legals to the... Chin chin. Um, the legals from the event is really nice, like is really helpful and so freeing and quite liberating. Anyway, um, legals versus getting a wedding separate. Now, some people, I was talking to a bride today, she was asking, what would you say is the ideal gap from doing your legals to doing your ceremony? And... <coughs> It sort of depends on you and how you are as a person. Um, I do do a lot of nervous brides. Not that they're nervous come the wedding day because they've spent a year and a bit with me not getting nervous and gaining confidence and feeling more and more that this is the right decision. As in, yes, getting married is the right decision, but um, separating the legals from the wedding. Because um, it really, honestly, truly helps with anxiety and if you're someone that suffers from anxiety um or not necessarily suffers but is just aware that every now and then it pops up um but put yourself in a cauldron of family politics or being the center of attention if you suffer from anxiety having a celebrant do the wedding massively helps massively helps having a celebrant for your wedding when you're ready like so especially in a pandemic i would say get married as soon as possible because you want that security you know being being married is the important bit you know otherwise you just had a very pretty pricey party um being married is the important bit but having the wedding is the celebratory bit. It's the bit that celebrates who you are as a couple, what your energy is, what your style is, like finding your style. And also, it's about setting the tone for the marriage. Um, but the relationship of the marriage has within your community and your society. So say you've got a rather strong brother-in-law um, who's very protective. Say you're a groom and you're having a heterosexual wedding, and your bride is a girl, <coughs> but your future brother-in-law is very protective over his little sister. Um, which, you know, is not a bad thing. Um, but to, to set the tone for the marriage, if she's always been, you know, the little sister that's been looked after by a big brother, and then newbie chap comes along and sweeps off her feet and... Um, proposes and there's a big fat wedding happening and they're going to go on honeymoon like you might have to deal with the dynamic of the brother so planning your wedding really is a an absolute opportunity to find your style to celebrate who you are as a couple and to show your values to show what's important so I would obviously I'm biased because I'm all about the wedding um I'm all about the wedding if the marriage is right but I don't think there's a right time to slot in marriage to wedding. For some people, <coughs> and to be honest, for most of my clients, it's the week of. So you would tend to tend to have your marriage half 11 on a Thursday, go out for a boozy lunch. Um, Friday, we'd have the rehearsal. Friday night, you have, some people have a rehearsal dinner. Um like with all the family, especially my um, Anglo-American couples or my international couples, they would still have their rehearsal dinner. But the rehearsal dinner wasn't the rehearsal of the wedding breakfast the next day. It's to celebrate the rehearsal of the wedding that we've just practised. Um, so uh, that's... If someone was like, can you give me some kind of template so I'm not looking at a blank planning planning sheet, I would say... Get married the week of the wedding, usually a Thursday or a Wednesday morning, late morning, like half 11. Go out for a boozy lunch, 
the next day we'd do the rehearsal um, and the day after that you'd have the wedding. So you've got like a full on wedding week. So you don't feel, excuse me, that the wedding is separate to the marriage. It's, it's, the, it's the front cover to a lifelong journey, the wedding. Um, but people do judge things by their cover. And if you're thinking, if my wedding was a book, would I pick it up off the shelf? And I think that a lot of people go, oh, don't judge a book by its cover. But you can't help it because the book should catch your eye. The wedding should catch your interest. It's your wedding. You're like, oh, I'm really interested in this. I want to enjoy wedding planning. I want it to be fun. I want it to feel celebratory. <laughs> Whatever it is that you want it to feel. Um, so pick the front cover to your marriage. And make that statement. It doesn't have to be dramatic. I obviously quite like a bit of drama. Um, it doesn't have to be dramatic. It can be subtle. It can be romantic. It can be all of those things. But um, if it's designed around your values of marriage, then it will work, come what may. Um, I've got a lot of other couples. I need to call other um, couples. It's, so it tends to be the couples have got married that week and it's wedding week. Or they've got married pre-pandemic and was going to have the wedding in the pandemic and now it's still going to happen. Or they've got engaged and just want to get married as soon as possible because... They don't just want to be engaged in never, you know, for infinity and beyond. Some couples are like, oh, we've got engaged. And they sort of think that's the end of the journey. It's not. <laughs> um, so if you get engaged to be married, you are making each other your next of kin. And that's what's really important. Um, so some people want to do it like a year later because they want to feel, and particularly my anxious brides do this, actually. Um, or if they've, they've got... Um, kids and they're just trying to work out the dynamics and the finances and trying to figure it all um but maybe leave it a year in a day so back in the day back in Shakespeare's day you would have a hand binding and you would be um betrothed for a year and a day and for those of you that are already married the first year does teach you a lot so if you get through the first year of marriage the day after a year and a day is the day where you make it absolute. So is the day that you would have your wedding and you publicly announce, ta-da, we are having a wedding. We are celebrating the fact that we've been married for a year. Here are our vows. We've learned a lot about each other. Our journey's changed over the last year. We've learned more about our values. <coughs> and it does give it a slightly different edge. It gives it a real wholesome, deep um, celebratory edge if you want it to others can give it a really flippant edge to be like you know what? we've been married a year that's fine we're nailing marriage we just want a big party um, but a big party in the wedding dress with all our mates to make that statement to get people involved to, to make it bigger than just two but also making it about you too it's your style, it's your front cover, it's your book you're writing together. So it is about you too. But what's nice about a wedding is it brings you all in. The legals don't need to be about or with anybody else other than your witness each. You know, it's the two by two. You bring a witness, partner brings a witness, registrar brings a witness. There's six of you in a room. I call upon these persons here present. I know not of any lawful impediment. Sign here, sign here, you're married. It's about 50 quid. So, you know, you don't have to, the legals don't have to be all singing and dancing. It's putting you in the system. It's changing your next of kin. It's changing your status in society and in law so that if things need to happen, hopefully the idea is it's less complicated. The marriage is the lifelong relationship and the contracts that you've signed up for willingly and after serious thought and soberly and yada 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 but the wedding is you throwing everything at it your hopes your aspirations your taste your music your music taste your photography taste all that is celebrating you guys as a couple and you are like i've said you know not judging a book by a cover you are completely making your own front cover you are saying this is us enjoy um, I've also had another conversation with a bride that was saying she's feeling weirdly private about wedding planning. I mean, other brides, if you're on, 
um does that does that resonate with you i remember i didn't sort of want to talk about my wedding because i knew everything was going to start coming at me um and i actually i went dress shopping with joe um we sort of split the duties i was like i'm not that interested i'm not a foodie i don't really care what i'm eating it's just kind of fuel sorry um but good fuel good food i love um but for me I'm, I'm whatever as long as i get fed at some point i don't really care um whereas he is quite a foodie he enjoys it he appreciates it he was wanting to plan the food and i was like oh that's fine he's not remotely interested in the ceremony <laughs> and i was like i'll do the ceremony you do the reception let's surprise each other and he's like okay great so we did it that way um so it just depends what you want your front cover to be uh it's exciting think of it as designing your marriage you know what are your favorite things what do you love about each other what are your favorite colors what vibe do you want what energy you want and being able to separate that from the legals takes off woof, so much pressure and so much worry and so much angst and so much like oh good behavior and do we have to do this and do we have to stand here and up down up down who says what can we talk can there be banter it's like you can't really banter if you don't know each other whereas if i've spent a year and a half getting to know you we can we can have that banter you know oh so and so you know whatever because you know it's like someone might do something or heckle or whatever and be able to kind of you know give back um so it was just to kind of answer a few dms that i'd had about what is the window between getting married and having a wedding it's whatever you want it to be i would say make it a thing so either make it wedding week and get married in the week of your wedding or make it a thing and do it a year and a day so you get married on the i know 18th of april and you have your wedding on the 19th of april the next year to celebrate one year of successful marriage and you're launching into you know not longer newlyweds you're launching into married life um so i would sort of recommend those two things but, you know, if it's four months because of visas, because you live in Singapore, it is what it is. But essentially, I'm saying don't worry about it. You know, the legals take the pressure off so that you can enjoy your event of your wedding weekend or your wedding day without the worry. And having a celebrant, having a relationship with that person in the room that's going to be there for that big moment absolutely helps you with that, especially if you've got anxiety. Um, and the other thing that I was sort of, I guess, to summarise, is it's it's just as real and it's just as special. And what makes it so personal is that you've designed it. So if, um, say, one half is saying, oh, we've done the important bit, we've done our legals, we're married now, we don't really need a wedding. Think about why you want a wedding. Because it adds to society. It sends out a message whatever that is that you think it is whatever you want that to be whatever it means to your family whatever it means to you like if you're the one that proposed why did you feel nervous if you felt nervous if you were the one that got proposed to and just went yeah, oh my god yes and just suddenly felt overwhelmed with joy why is it so special it's because they're choosing you for the rest of their days that's amazing that's why you get married um and in that choice is exactly the heart of celebrancy. You would choose your suppliers. You would choose who you want to stand there with your friends and family to channel your ceremony, to guide you, to help create it with you, to style it, all that sort of stuff. All that sort of stuff. If you have a registrar, you don't get that. You get a, you get it to a bit, and there's some lovely reg registrars out there that will absolutely do their best to try and do that for you and. I don't blame them. Absolutely. I think that's a wonderful thing you can do. But they can only go to a point. You don't get the freedom. You don't get the breadth. You don't get the depth. Um, you just don't You just don't get that much freedom. So if freedom's important to you, if expression's important to you, if style's important to you, and if being your true self, being authentic to your marriage, to your relationship, in front of your friends and family so that they can see what, that front cover of the book is of you then that's why the wedding's important it's not just about being married that's why the wedding is important and 
the celebration of that marriage, be it from the Monday that week, be it from last year, or be it from as far as they're concerned happening now. It's up to you. So hope that's helpful. Um, embrace it, embrace the choice. We're so lucky in this country, we can pretty much do what we like and how we want to do it. Um, so I'm, I'm with you all the way. Get in touch. Lots of love. Take care. Bye for now.